Today I'm going to walk you through how I plan a bikepacking trip. A huge part of bikepacking is preparation, both in your experience in the outdoors and preparation of the route and your planning of it. It's not like a little one or two hour trail ride where if you get a flat you can walk back to your car. A lot of the routes that I pick are remote and are often a multi-day hike away from civilization. And so I really need to do my due diligence in planning. And the planning and research is a really fun aspect of this bikepacking. You get to go in and look at your terrain and imagine how it might be. And then when you go out on the route, it's fun to compare how you thought it was going to be with how it actually was. And I always learn something on every trip. So I'm planning a bike packing trip to go with my buddies Cody and James. We're all getting a little bit antsy for another bike packing trip. So we all got time off work and we're getting ready to choose where to go and plan the route. Every good trip should start with bikepacking.com. If you don't come here a lot, you need to. This is like where you go for bike packing stuff. Logan Watts and his team have done an incredible job building this site. They've put a ton of work into it. It works really well. It's beautiful. It's easy to find stuff. Every day they've got new articles and interesting things going on, reviews and announcements and pieces of gear. And I spend the most time in the route section. So over here we can filter by type, single track or mountain bike, gravel or all road, dirt road, touring or fat bike. So bikepacking means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For me, I really love single track remote routes, while other people like being able to sleep at a hotel every night and find a restaurant on the way. So you need to do your research because just because it's on here doesn't mean it's your type of bikepacking. Uh, you can also filter by the length. My buddies Cody and James and I, we've ridden together and bikepacked together. Last year we did a portion of the Colorado Trail, so I know the riding level, and they want single track just like I do. And we've got four or five days off work, so that gives us some options. Uh, you can also filter by location. But we're just going to go to the map here and make sure all routes are selected, because I just love seeing where all the routes are in the world. Now, some of these routes are submitted by staff of bikepacking.com, and some of them are submitted by users. If it's on here, it's usually a pretty vetted route. They have an approval process when you submit a route, but the responsibility always lies with you to do your research. These are just starting points for you to do your research. You can't just follow these blindly and say, oh, it said there would be water here, so I was surprised there wasn't. That's the author's fault. No, it's not. The authors are just putting some ideas out here. But if you do want to contribute a route, they've got some great guidelines to do that too. All right, so we're going to go to Southern Arizona. We live in Arizona. Southern Arizona is perfect this time of year. It's actually a little bit cooler than Phoenix because it's got higher elevation. And let's look at our options. Here we've got El Camino del Diablo. I'm going to open that in a new tab. Here we've got the Sky Islands Odyssey West Loop. Here we've got the Sky Islands Odyssey East Loop. Okay. Here we've got the AZT or the Arizona Trail. That's a 740 mile trail that crosses all of Arizona. Here we have the Western Wildlands route, which is 2,600 miles with 162,000 feet of climbing. Uh, this goes from Mexico to Canada. Out here we've got the Tombstone Hustle. Let's zoom in a little more, see if there's anything else we want to look at up here. Yeah, so it looks like I could kind of link sections of the Western Wildlands route with the Arizona Trail, with the AZT. That's cool. I could link some of these together and make my own little loops. And that's what I love about this tool is that I can just link a whole bunch of stuff together and create my own route. And then there's a couple other softwares that I like to use. Um, Ride with GPS is one of them. MTB Project is another one. And Trail Forks is another one. So Trail Forks is primarily designed for mountain biking, not bike packing, but finding good mountain biking trails. And so what I can do is search this area and see where the, the coolest trails are. You know, maybe I want to hit this black diamond out here, part of AZT, but I also want to hit this section here. I can loop these together and find how they overlap over here on our main routes. So this is a way that I plan my routes to include fun mountain biking 
within it because I don't just want to do gravel roads. Same thing with MTB project. This is made by REI and it's free. So I can do the same thing. This, I really like this. The database isn't quite as big as trail forks at the moment, but here you can see the Arizona trail and I can see the difficulty levels along the AZT. Here's a blue intermediate. Here's a black diamond section. Here's some green. And here's part of that tombstone hustle. So I can zoom in on these guys, click on them, see what direction they recommend it. Let's see. They recommend clockwise. So I can pull that stronghold loop up, get a little bit of beta there as well. So this is a 26 mile loop. Okay, that helps me know alternate routes if I did do that. That's really nice. They've got the weather tied to it. You can get driving directions right to it. You can see ratings, what other people have rated it. Strongly recommend starting from Kochi's campground. This way you spread out the hike a bike uphill and have the last descent down the awesome stronghold. The scenery is epic and sacred. A very rewarding ride for technical riders. Cool. I can see pictures that people have uploaded. So this is another great way to see if I want to link some areas together. So, you know, maybe I want to go ride this section out here that I've never been to. I can see if I can connect to that to bikepacking.com and maybe I can put together my own 200 mile route. So I use MTB Project and Trail Forks to add to that. Same thing with Ride with GPS. They have a ton of information. I'll be coming back to Ride with GPS to plan my actual route, but they have so many options in here. So, you know, I can come in here. We've got trails all over the place. So it's almost a little too overwhelming. Um, I can change different types of maps, OSM cycle. Let's see what options we've got out there on that. So tons and tons and tons of information, probably more than I need right now, but I'm going to come back to that later. But let's take a look at these routes that I clicked on on bikepacking.com in Southern Arizona. So Camino del Diablo, 130 miles. That's good. That's about what we want. Three days. That's good. 96% unpaved. That's good. Dang it, 0% single track. That's too bad. We want some single track, so that's going to rule it out for us, but I'm going to put file this in the back of my mind if I ever want to do it again. So difficulties of 5 out of 10, 100% rideable, no hike of bikes, and only 2,500 feet of climbing. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Might even be able to do that in two days if we wanted to push it. But that's a pretty gravel-only looking route. I could read some more and see if... Okay, it says this route isn't for everyone. It often features very sandy roads and requires careful attention to water. Be sure to review the must-know section. Okay, I can attest that area of Arizona is very remote and you do not want to run out of water out there. Okay, not quite what we're looking for, but that is part of the research process. Sky Islands Odyssey, the West Loop, 99% rideable, 0% single track. Darn, and there's a fair bit of pavement. Don't want that. How about the East Loop? Two to four days, 125 miles, 0% single track. So that sounds like this would be good for like a drop bar bike or a rigid bike, but not so much for the mountain bikes. And right now I'm looking for mountain biking. So that's not going to meet my needs. How about this? The AZT, the Arizona Trail. Okay, this is 740 miles long. Obviously we wouldn't do the whole thing. 90% unpaved. 65% single track, that's a good proportion. Very difficult, lots of climbing. So what I would do is come down to this map section of it, which by the way is hosted by Ride with GPS. And I can scroll into this lower section. This is really cool. So from Tucson down, and I can, I can go through my little elevation profile here. Where does it, okay, so it starts here. So it's all about five or 6,000 feet elevation through here. Not bad. A little bit of climbing there. So all the way to Tucson, I can stay under 6,000 feet. Okay, that might be an option. That could be a leg that I do and I route in some other stuff. I'm familiar with a lot of the routes in Tucson. So I think I could loop something together. So I'm going to keep a pin in that.
So I'm going to leave that tab open. That's, that's an intriguing one. And I have a goal to ride all of the Arizona Trail in sections one day anyway. So that could be really fun. We'd have to figure out, I like to do loops so we don't have to shuttle too much, but I, you never get everything you want on a bikepacking trip. All right, let's look at Western Wildlands bikepacking trip. This one is 2,000 miles. This one does Mexico to Canada, so we'd just be doing a portion of this, but it's only 1% single track. I don't know, maybe, um, but that could be an interesting way. Wow, look at all the info he's put in there. Thank you, Kurt. That's amazing. So this is going through Sierra Vista. Where does AZT go? Okay, so we could probably do a loop connecting these two if we wanted to. All right, that's cool. We got options there. It goes through Tombstone. Um, I love it when they put information on this, like camp at least one mile from roads. There's a $2 camping fee payable at the trailheads. Just lots of great info on here. Okay, that's another good option. Although this looks like it's all gravel roads. Not sure I want that, but we'll take a look. And now here we have the Tombstone Hustle bike packing the dragoons. The dragoons are beautiful and I've driven through there before and I've always wanted to stop and check them out. I also know there's some good mountain biking in there from MTB Project and Trail Forks. So 72 miles long, two days. All right, a little shorter than we want, but that'll work. 75% unpaved. I don't like riding on pavement. I've had a lot of friends get in car accidents, getting hit by cars on pavement. So I'm scared of it and I don't have a lot of experience riding on pavement. But this is a more remote area of Arizona, so I feel like the danger is lower. It's more wide open. I think people are going to be able to see me better, but I do want to bring my blinky light for that so people do see me if I do do this route. 13% single track, not quite what I wanted, but that's better than most of the other ones. Difficulty, 6 out of 10. And Logan Watts put this together, and Logan puts together really great routes. I love his routes. He's a mountain biker. And so a lot of his routes involve single track and a lot of times it's technical single track, which I really like. And it looks like 10% of this trail, so seven miles are not rideable, or at least time-wise. That's a lot. Um, I don't love hike-a-biking. It's part of bikepacking, but this sounds like a tough trail. 4,000 feet of climbing, okay, not bad across two days. And uh, it never gets above 6,000 feet. That'll be just about right for... Um, the temperatures that we want. I want to learn a little bit more about this because this route's already done and I don't have to do any extra research. I just need to learn about this route. Uh, let's see, relatively quick loop. Okay, it could be started on a Saturday and finished by Sunday evening. All right, it goes from Tombstone to the Dragoons. Awesome. All right, we learn about some of the history. Difficulty, this was awarded a six out of 10. Now for a Logan Watts route, if a difficulty is 6 out of 10, it's it's more difficult than you think. A lot of guys hop on here that have strong road backgrounds and think, oh, I can pedal my brains out all day long. I can do 200-mile days. This will be no problem. But a lot of it has to do with technicality as well. So here it says it's short, not terribly difficult, but there's some technical riding. And a 45-minute to an hour hike a bike up to the stronghold. That doesn't sound fun. So now I'm trying to decide what I want to bring my clipless shoes and hike in those for an hour or my flat pedals. I don't know. In addition, the descent can be a little tricky if you're not a strong technical mountain biker. Now that sounds fun to me. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. Uh, let's look through some of the pictures, see if that gets me excited or if it's not that exciting. So here we got gravel roads. Logan's a great photographer. Man, the Dragoons are so good. All right. That looks fun. Coming down there, looks like Tucson terrain, probably crushed granite over granite with some, okay, cool. I'll probably see some snakes out there. Be careful about that. All right, water crossings, that's good. I'm always trying to factor in water crossings where we can fill up and filter water, especially in the desert. All right. Oh, this is the best part. This is like looking at the menu at the restaurant and going straight to the desserts. Like they put the best pictures in here. So you got to remember it. Every inch of it isn't like this, but this is the highlights and I can't wait to, to see this. Oh, beautiful. All right. That looks like a little primitive camp spot they found. It looks like it's uh, probably getting dark. And I like that, that it's not a super developed campground. I always like finding wild campgrounds if I can. 
Yeah, that's a wild campground. Cool. Beautiful. These pictures always get me excited. I always like looking at what bikes they're on. It looks like they're on a rigid Surly there and a full suspension Santa Cruz, maybe a tall boy, something like that. Cool. That's good to know. Um, gives me an idea. I'm sure we'll be fine on our hardtails with front suspension. Cool. We got some single track through some rocks. Looks like Prescott terrain, more water. Oh, that looks exciting. Okay. Hike a bike section. Knowing Cody, he will challenge me to try and ride up this with him and I will accept that challenge and hopefully do it. But <laughs> that's really hard on a loaded bike. Uh, I don't think there's any way we get up that, but we like stupid challenges like that. Okay, that'll be fun. Now, another thing to factor in is which direction they rode it. And so riding it the other way could add some benefits or disadvantages. So I'll be thinking about that too. Beautiful, some slick rock out there. Coronado National Forest. Okay, here's a gravel road. You can put down a lot of miles here. Okay, cool, coming into town. This looks like Tombstone. And that means water supplies. I can go to restaurants. Uh, you can usually fill up your water bottle or purchase bottled water or snacks or candy bars or whatever. Awesome. All right, so it looks like it's got some remote stuff and some towns. That's kind of a nice balance, especially in the desert. Cool little pictures, part of the town. There's the Dragoons up there. Kochi Stronghold. Cool, maybe we'll have dinner at a restaurant. That could be fun. So I'll bring my light and my lock so I can lock the bike up while we're there. More gravel roads. Okay, cool. That gets me pretty stoked about it. Let's take a look at the map. This is uh, built in Ride with GPS. That's who I use to build all my maps, and they're a partner of the channel. I really, really like Ride with GPS. Uh, I don't use Strava. I use them, and I really like it. Okay, so if we go left to right, we can see which direction they went. Okay, so they went clockwise. So I'm betting that hike a bike was in here where we see the steep elevation. None of this looks crazy until you get right about there, mile 22.3. That's going to be a steep up and down. Okay, then this looks pretty flat across here. That might be part of the highway. Usually when it's that flat and it goes through a grid of towns. Uh, so I'll use Google Maps to hop in there and see if there's any resupply points or gas stations where I can fill up my water. I love using uh, soda fountains to fill up my water. That's just a, a really great way to get clean water. And then, all right, some more driving down here, then back into the mountains. I like that with Ride with GPS, you can change to see like satellite view. So I can kind of see, I'll bet there's water in here or at least canyons where water probably drains. Um, out here, it looks pretty dry and desolate. Anyway, that's kind of fun to see. You can choose some different uh, some terrain maps. Cool. Okay, so this is a pretty good option. So highlights, pedaling through the historic wild west towns of Tombstone and Pierce. That'll be cool to show James because he's from Colorado and he's never been down here. That could make it really fun. A mixed bag of terrain. That's good. Variety is good. As much as I love single track, slogging through miles and miles and miles of single track can sometimes get old. And sometimes having a nice gravel road can free it up a little, help you make up some lost ground. It keeps it interesting. So everything from fast single track to grassland to rocky hike a bike. That sounds cool. A fun and technical descent through Kochi Stronghold. Beautiful high desert scenery and wildlife. Cool. So must know information. Best ridden in early spring or late fall. Okay, we're doing it in late spring. We're going to do it in the middle of March. It's possible it'll be too hot but we're desert rats, we're used to it. We'll be okay, hopefully, but I'll check the weather. Uh, the, right, the route lies at 4,000 feet in elevation, so nights will be cold. Most of the route's on dirt roads with moderate climbs. I love this information. Logan puts together such a great route. The Kochi Stronghold Pass is bear country. Ah, cool. It's advisable to bring a bear bag snack system to store food. I didn't know that. That's really interesting. As noted by a writer in the comments, the 1 to 1.5 mile horse trail at the end of the descent might be a bit degraded and isn't very pleasant. It can be avoided. Okay, I'll look into that more. Camping, plenty of wild camping spots. Awesome. As well as designated camping. I recommend several options about a quarter mile from the posted divide. Okay, I love that he puts the, the mile marker. So 24.2, I could come in here. So as I do my planning here at 24.2, I can see 
to and where that dot is. Okay, I'll zoom in and check that out and uh, do some more info there. Food and water, unless you're tackling the route within a week or so of rainfall, expect to carry water for a full one and a half day supply. Yikes. Okay, there were plenty of active creeks when we wrote it, but that's not always the case. It hasn't rained a lot here in Arizona lately, so I'm not expecting it. Several stores and restaurants around mile 36. Really good info. Uh, let's see what what's this download help. Is this a Q sheet? Oh, cool. Like I said, bikepacking.com is an amazing resource and they make it super easy to get started into bikepacking. All right, so I'm liking this route. I'm also liking the idea of doing part of the AZT and possibly connecting with the Western Wildlands route. So now what I'm going to do is text my buddies Cody and James and see which of these proposed routes they're feeling the most. I'll send them the links, have them look through the pictures, look at the routes and see what they think. All right, I just heard back from Cody and James and we have decided on the Tombstone Hustle, this 72 mile route through Kochi Stronghold in the Dragoons. And I'm excited. All right, so that's how we picked a route. But that's just the very, very start of our process here. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I actually plan the route now that I've selected one. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so you're notified when the next one drops when I show you how I plan the route. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.